Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Oh, I feel like my mic is way too loud. Hold on. That should be better. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That still might be too loud. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Good evening and welcome back to another ESL Go For. My name is Corn Pop and I'll be casting tonight. We are going to be watching Ariel Arise versus No Name in our first quarterfinal match. We will be covering the quarterfinals and then the semifinals, likely not the grand finals. As uh, I just need to go to bed early tonight. But hopefully we can still get some good games in. We have eight in the server right now. I'll wait for the, uh, the next two. And then we will get going here. I did just uh, move my setup around. So if the audio is needs fixing, just let me know. And uh, as soon as we start up, I will take away the splash screen and we can get casting. Today already a big day for a lot of Rainbow Six Siege fans. We crowned the champion of season number eight today, earlier this morning, if you're from North America. Not the best uh, grand final game we ever saw, but a good tournament overall, I would say, especially the first quarterfinal round. It's a lot of really good games. I woke up really early and I did watch every game. As much as it hurt, I did uh, I did pull that off. So that was a lot of fun. We have one team all readied up. Just going to wait for Eero to rise. There they are. We're going to start off the match. And let me get rid of the splash screen for you. Ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Rainbow Six Go for PC North America number 140. My name is Cornpop. Of course, I'm your caster. Ariel Arise, Ariel Arise versus No Name here on Vila as our first and only map on this best of one. First ban, going to be Lion. And of course, if you weren't watching the Pro League Finals today, uh, the hottest news is that as of next season, I don't know when it's going to start for Go Fours, but this is affecting Go Fours. Lion is going to be an auto ban in every single match. So there will be five operator bands per match, four chosen by the teams, and uh, one will always be Lion. In the meantime, the developers are going to work on him as an operator, and then once he's in a better state, they're going to release him and allow him to be played again. But right now, extremely overpowered, extremely broken, extremely bad for the game. So I think I speak for almost everybody when I say this is a very good change. A lot of positive reception so far in the community. Glass, the other band, and Mira. Two very powerful operators as well. I love one more ban, the defensive operator for No Name. No Name is a team we've actually casted before a couple of weeks ago. Uh, now, I did miss last week, but I did cast the October finals instead. Valkyrie is the final ban. Nothing really out of the ordinary out of those four. Um, I did cast No Name before, and I casted them against a team called Nameless, and that was extremely confusing. Thankfully, their team they're up against this time has a name. And uh, it is Ariel Arise. And perhaps it is fitting that our first bombsite will be on Aviator. Chosen, of course, by No Name, but up against Ariel Arise. As we're about to go live here, we'll run down these rosters really quick. Over on the side of Aerial Arise, we have Rethinking, Speak, Element Gaming, T1, and Savage. Meanwhile, on No Name, we have Lewis, Trigang, DoxG, Revy, and JN Han. Not the exact same roster um, that we had last time we covered No Name. I believe Trigang and DoxG are new, but the other three are definitely familiar to me. And although I haven't casted Aerial Arise, definitely some of these names are familiar to me. Element Gaming, T1, Rethinking. I believe I've casted all those players before. So a little bit of familiarity. We'll watch the setup here on Aviator Games. Of course, Vila, a fairly defensive-sided map. So we're looking to see quite a few rounds by No Name. But if Aerial Arise can get ah, two, 
they'll be looking pretty good for the side swap. Another change coming to the GoFours, and I believe this one is affecting GoFours too, it's definitely for Pro League, is that uh, in the future, we will be doing best of 12s rather than the current best of 10 system where there's 10 rounds. In future GoFours, that will be changed to 12. And I'm not sure exactly when that change is going to happen. Um, I don't believe they've mentioned the exact date yet, but that is something to look forward to. A little bit more competitive games, a little bit longer because go for is uh, usually end way too early. That's obviously sarcasm. I think of being played by Element Gaming. This is an operator that we saw a lot of at, uh, at Rio this morning and yesterday as well. Being taken a lot by Brazilian teams. Specifically, FaZe Clan. Using that operator really well, really effectively. Not an operator we've seen very much of, especially not in North America. But I do wonder if the Finca pick has been influenced at all by the finals that we just watched. And, well, it hasn't helped them so far. They've already lost one Jahan. Jahan Han gets the first kill onto the Buck. At least four attackers still trying to get into the building. Element Gaming has gotten into the staircase and he's gotten a goo mine in his foot speaks inside as well the other two just entering now only gaming up on the top floor despite that adrenaline boost lewis will get the kill and he gets another one or he gets the assist as try gang finishes off the last player walking up those steps now it's rethinking sees the goo mine thrown out waiting for the shot it's a nice one on a try gang aware of the player to his right as well trying to pre-fire but they're not jumping out at him will he see the player's now there's a castle barricade there. Jumping out. Lewis gets taken down from behind, though. He's not expecting the last player. It's Jahan. T1 now takes down that player. It's a one on two. Trying to get back into the bomb site. Pre-firing a couple of angles. Watching out from behind him. That's smart because here comes the flank. The castle of Doxy not able to get anything. It's a one on one. Starting things off right in our very first round that we're casting tonight. Revy on the vigil was on the roam. Has now found himself the last remaining player on his team, sitting on the B-bomb site. T1 just on drones right now. Looking into A site, being very careful with his drone. He's got a fair bit of time to work with, still a minute on that clock. He does not need to rush. He's got the diffuser. He's playing IQ, which is probably not favored in the battle against Vigil, but... I think overall, being the attacker in the situation, just needs to plant... In a pretty good situation. Especially with Revy just content to sit here on the B. He might be more looking towards a retake. Because T1 is perfectly clear just to plant. However, Revy seems to know it's going down. It's likely that they have info. Firing into the sights, but the diffuser is going to get planted regardless. And he's trying to look into the site right now. But he loses the gun battle and T1 wins it for his team. Ariel Arise will take the first round. What a great shot to end things off there. Rehost is T1 gone. Looks like a HUD issue. So we will have a rehost then. I am going to put it on a splash screen just for a second, but we shouldn't be too long here. Luckily, not much of the game has gone by, so there won't be too much uh, setup required. To get us back in the in the way we want to be. They had selected trophy statuary as their defensive bomb site, though. Of course, uh, they don't have to change or they don't have to stick to that. And if they knew it was a rehost, they might not uh, even. Have wanted that. I might have just randomed or something, but maybe some things to look at there if they can decide to stick with that. But after only one round, we're gonna have a nice rehost. What would it go for B without a rehost? Ariel arise taking the first the first round. Does unfortunately mean that the stats will be a little bit messed up for the rest of the, the rest of the match. But again, thankfully it's only one round. 
So stats will be more or less okay. So, we'll set things up again. Okay, everything's set up. We're just going to wait for the players to get back in here. I think T1 was the one who was having issues, and uh, we're just going to wait on him to join. I guess we can talk a little bit more about those Pro League Finals. Hopefully people uh, have seen those. It's pretty exciting. North America kind of got uh, destroyed. A Gimped Fanatic managed to take down the top seed, and uh, Rogue didn't fare a whole lot better against Nora Rengu. A little bit disappointing if you're a North American fan. But there's always the Invitational. That'll be on North American soil. Maybe the nerves can stop getting to them. I think a big part of it um, for the NA teams, at least for Evil Geniuses, is just sort of their mindset. Because really, that was a match they had no right to lose. And uh, it's a shame it just goes that way. Looks like there may be some more issues in this match. I'm going to wait and find out. Some wire stuff. remind the stream that we are on a three minute delay so if you have any issues with the sound or um anything else please do tell me in chat i might take a while to respond i might take three minutes to fix it but it will get fixed i am reading the chat looks like one of the players is not on wire and didn't realize it so he's gonna have to uh restart and come back So this delay will be extended a little bit longer. Unfortunate, but that's how it goes. You gotta play fair, you gotta play by the rules. And ideally you'd like to play without a messed up HUD or anything like that. So no shame in that. I know a couple of other things are going on uh, today as well, other than the finals. I think CSS had their quiet, or CCS rather, had their qualifiers and then there was the european go for as well that somebody was casting i'm not sure if they got any viewers for the qualifiers or the go for um pretty hard to compete with the highest tier in the game when you pull when you're streaming at the exact same time as the pro league grand finals likely hurts your viewership a little bit but pretty sure most go for casters don't uh, don't do it for the viewers or don't do it for you know having a large viewer number I should say. We're still waiting though, unfortunately. T1 still hasn't even gotten back in. He was the original reason why we left. Um, he had the HUD issue.
There's T1. I'm not sure if uh, the wire issue is fixed yet. No, he just left. Okay. It was bugged, so they say. Fair enough. So one more restart, and then we can finally go. <laughs> yes, the wire is probably the worst program known to man. Hey, now. I wouldn't know. I don't. I don't. Know. I don't have to use wire, which is lucky. I just need to stream, which has its own issues sometimes. Normally, we can get things going though. It can be a lot of waiting, a lot of standing around. But otherwise, I mean, there are worse problems in the world. The wire is loading up. I believe it's coming close to Thanksgiving for Americans. I'm Canadian, so I wouldn't know this. Or I wouldn't celebrate, but I think I do know it. I'm bad at uh, holiday names, though. Or holiday dates, rather. Names I can usually do pretty alright on. You know, Christmas, Halloween. Names I'm okay. Dates, though, I'm really bad at. Do, 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 do. Pretty much just in the chat right now, people are uh, just saying they're chilling. Take your time, fix the wire. Complaining about how bad wire is. Complaining about a lot of people don't use wire in these tournaments. But it is the rules. And of course, I mean, the, you know, if the other team calls you on it, definitely you need to fix that. It looked like in this situation, he wasn't trying to dodge it or anything. It's just, it broke for him. And uh, all the players are perfectly understanding. So we can be too. We can be patient. Not an issue there. If you're bored right now, I do know that Tamies is casting a different match. I think a different quarterfinal match. Perhaps even a round of 16, I'm not sure. Yes, I think he's doing a round of 16 match right now. So if you can go find uh, Team's Twitch channel. I'm not going to link it because we should be going live soon. But you, you can put that on the background while you wait. No issue with that. As always, if uh, the players are streaming, the players are more than welcome to stream these games. But uh, we are on a three-minute delay. The players are not restricted to that delay. So if you want to go watch them and you want another perspective... That's perfectly fine as well. All I ask is you don't uh, spoil the results if they are not using the same delay as me. Otherwise, still on that wait, of course. This is, what's the date today? This is pretty late actually into the month. I'm not sure if uh, any of these teams are on the leaderboard. Of course, the top eight teams at the end of the month do get to go to the monthly finals, which happen usually sometime after the month is over. It's always on a Saturday and it's always just an eight team single elimination tournament. All best of threes though. And if you make top two in that tournament, you do get a nice little cash prize, which is always good. You know what, I've got waiting on match to start uh, up on the screen. Whoops. We don't necessarily need that. This <laughs> thing, it doesn't help you as a potato PC. That's how it goes. Again, if you're just joining us, we are currently in a rehost. We have played one match, or one round all night. We are on Vila. The match is Ariel Arise versus No Name. It is the quarterfinals of the North American PC Go For number 140. And the first round was won by Ariel Arise. They were attacking onto Aviator Games. 
And then they're a nice little one-on-one. T1 clutched it out for his team. But his punishment for doing so well was that his HUD broke on him and his sound glitched. And so we had to rehost. He left, he came back. And then it uh, turned out there was an issue with another player's ESL wire, which meant that he also needed to leave and get that fixed, which is why this break is taking so long. Shouldn't be too much longer now, though. Probably only a minute or two, maybe less. As soon as this last player gets in, we'll be good to go. And the players are being understanding. The casters and viewers, me and you, we can be understanding as well. What's most important in these Go4 games is that people have a fair fight. Can play to the best of their abilities. For a lot of these teams, these are lower level teams. For a lot of them, it's just a great chance to practice and a great chance to get better. These Gophers, they happen every week, and so if you're on a team, you can play in these. Each week, you can try to get a little bit better, place a little bit higher. And sometimes you run into those mixed teams where you might have a couple of pro players, a couple of high-level challenger players, just sort of mixing it up. But they don't always win. Go for is probably the best... I don't know if it's the best way for new teams to play, but it's the best official way, certainly. If you want to play in ESL tournaments in your low-level team, this is the tournament for you. It's free for anybody to enter. Usually there's around 100 teams signed up per week. And if you're a brand new team full of brand new players, then uh, then it might take you a bit. But regardless, everybody is here. We're about to go live. I can stop stalling. Thank goodness. <laughs> it is Vila. Round number two, we're starting here. Aerial Arise versus No Name. I still want to mention, if you're looking to join the Go4, type in exclamation point bracket, and you can be taken to the website where all that happens. You can't sign up for this tournament. Obviously, it's already started. But next Sunday, there'll be a tournament just like it. Starts at 6 p.m. EST. It's 3 p.m. Pacific. And obviously, signups will start an hour before then. So, in case you've forgotten, because it's been almost 15 minutes, let's go down these rosters. For Aerial Arise, they've got Rethink and Speak, T1, Element Gaming, and Savage. And over on No Name, they've got Lewis, Trigang, Docs G, Revy, and JN Han. They're going to go back to Aviator Games because they lost it last time. And six picking over to Kavira as well. Another operator that generally doesn't see a lot of play, but uh, saw a lot of play in the finals this weekend over in Rio. So both these teams may be taking a little bit of inspiration from the unique stuff that we saw over the weekend from the highest level of play. I don't believe I've ever seen a Cav on Vila. Bank seems to be her domain. It's possible it's happened. I don't watch every single pro match, of course, but my experience doesn't seem to be too, too common. Javier is not common on any map, though, so what can you say? Please do let me know if there's any issues with the video or the audio. Just moved around my PC, kind of changed my setup a bit, so it's possible things are off from where they used to be. But here we go, round number two. Element Gaming is taking care of those clouds. No longer going to be an issue. The threat of rain has been eliminated. Meanwhile, Savage on the Ash has already entered the building and about to be in an engagement. Saw it for just a second. I think Jehan noticed that as well and just runs away. Throws down an ADS. Got the info he was looking for. Oh, but also got the bullets that he wasn't quite looking for. Savage, so aggressive on this Ash. Already charging into sight. Already chasing down kills. A nice entry frag onto the Jaeger. 
The other attacker is making quick work as well. These are the defenders, though. They're all, they're all in the site. Docs G's in here. Playing careful so far. Revy hasn't spotted anybody. Most of the attack haven't entered the building. There was a grenade. Element Gaming almost got someone. He definitely has the calls and a great throw. Takes down Docs G. There's only three defenders left alive. Of course, they did lose that first round as well. Lewis about to find some players. We see the silhouettes pre-firing that angle. Ravi on the first floor. Wants to try to find someone. Doesn't look like there are any attackers currently here. But as he walks up these stairs, he loses another teammate. T1 goes down. Finds a player firing off the shotgun. He will get one on speak, but refragged, rethink, and gets the kill. And it's all on a try gain and a one on four. He'll need a fantastic clutch to be able to win it for his team. But Element Gaming shuts that down with a pistol headshot. And another round going in favor of Aerial Arise. We'll see now if No Name want to change up the bomb site. Oh no. I believe we do have to keep going because they already used their one rehost. Very sad. But what can you do? There'll be four on five this round. And Trophy Statuary will be our bomb site, the other second floor site. Doesn't look like too much has changed from the attack. Of course, they don't have the ash anymore, they just disconnected, but. Still doing alright. I think that was the ash player. Either way, defense setting up. They know they're going to be a man down or a man up this game. Revy's been the one to really change up these operators. The first round, um, I don't remember exactly what he was all. I was going to say he was on uh, Vigil, but that might not be right. He was on Kavira, though, for one of them. And now he's on to the dock. Which should be another aggressive operator. Kavira, I guess it worked out for him. He didn't really do anything that unique to Kavira. He sort of just hid downstairs and came up. It seemed like that shotgun wasn't really working out. I mean, yeah, it got the job done, but it took him a long time. And because of that, he did lose his life. I feel like if he was on a different operator, he might have been able to do the same thing. However, do it a little bit more effectively. If you get that kill a little bit faster, you can probably live in that situation. So... Maybe that's a situation where you're wishing you're not on Kavira. Regardless, he's not anymore. He's taken the ACOG instead. And the attackers down a man will try to enter the building. Of course, this castle barricade, they're going to slowly work away at it. Really wish they had that ash now. Oh, there's an explosion. Lewis strategically takes down that castle barricade with his impact grenade and then hits the headshot. A fantastic play from the Legion. Recognize that that was being opened up and shut it down. Really well played by him. Three attackers, but only four defenders as Savage will take down Lewis. And start this comeback from the attack. Rethink is going to open up the big wall here. Hide away, drone it out first. There is a player way back there. Savage has got to be careful. He doesn't walk in any sight lines that he doesn't need to. And Savage will take down Jay on with a headshot, evening the numbers three on three. Element Gaming down below is coming up to some stairs. There's nobody down here on the first floor. Despite having the numbers advantage, they're all playing pretty passively. But I understand why Element Gaming is being down here. Of course, the last couple of rounds, they played pretty aggressively. Nobody's up there anymore. Someone was running away. Shots firing out. We'll take down Savage. Revy gets the kill. I think a boost will help out rethinking here. As only Gaming charges upstairs. And he's going to run into the dock. Will he win this fight? He can just keep on firing. 6p41 gets one kill on him. And rethinking gets another one. It's a two-on-one. All of a sudden, Docs G finds himself at a disadvantage. And again, the last player remaining. G coming in and not checking the angles. Rethinking's going to wish that he was. Did not have the information. And it's all up to Element Gaming in a one-on-one. -on -one. The second one-on-one -on -one we've seen. Element 
Element Gaming. Gonna get that Diffuser. That'll tell Docs G exactly where he's at, but he's ma making a run for it. Element Gaming has the number of Docs G. Knows where he's at, firing through there. Of course, a lot of ammo in that clip, and that helps him out. Docs G not ready for the aggression. Loses his life because of it. Game audio is too quiet. Thank you for letting me know. I can turn that up. T1 has returned. Thank goodness. Let me know if this is a little bit better on the game audio. Again, I just sort of moved all my setup around, so... Very likely to be some issues. So yeah, Savage is the one playing the Ash, but I think he swapped over to the IQ last time because he knew he was only going to have four players. And uh, the IQ, probably a little bit more important than Ash. Goes to Sledge this time. But Ash, usually not the most crucial of an operator, usually not one where you're going to say, we need an Ash or else. And that last round was kind of the opposite because if they had been able to take down that Castle Barricade quicker, which the Ash can do, then uh, could have saved a life. was not to be and now they're going to be attacking in round number four the bomb site is back to aviator no name have yet to win a single round and there have been some really close ones i mean the scoreline definitely does not reflect how close this game has been it's been a lot of back and forth different teams have had the advantage in different moments we've come down to two one-on-ones in the end, Ariel or Eyes are just the team that's able to finish this out, though. That's been the real difference maker. Echo being brought for the first time by Trigang. And Docs G on the Maestro as well. These are two very powerful operators that haven't really been utilized yet. And I like this operator selection a lot more. Revy on the Rook because he only wants to play each operator one time. Jan Han. A little bit of roam in the walk-in closet right now. This is... It could be a position. He hasn't grabbed his jacket, which is going to be an issue. He does get droned out, which likely says that the attackers are headed this way. Goes for the drone. Doesn't quite get the kill. Take a look at the attack. That's rethinking. He's got his drone in there. And the attackers are walking up to this site. They're on the window. T1's brought the breaching charges this time, and he's going to open this up nice and fast. The castle barricade not going to be his demise this time. But there's nobody on the other side of it. Oh, or is there? Savage Aerial gets one on the other side of the map. And Speak sees this kill. It's going to be Savage Aerial who takes down Lewis, though. He's on a two kill so far. This round, he's doing really well. Rethinking on very little HP. Only likely saved because of that. Think of boost. And now he's going to open up this wall. They were looking to reset him, but I don't think they're going to do that yet. Speak gets the ping. Likely should have gone for the shot instead. Savage Aerial goes for the grenade throw. Pre-firing this spot. Might be able to just fire through the boxes. I'm really not sure. No, it doesn't look like that's penetrable. Trigang going to get one. Firing towards the window. All these players playing def uh, behind deployable shields. But Savage Aerial going to get a headshot. Speak with one as well. And Revy, the last man alive. Trying to get a round on a board. A single round for the defense. A nice first kill. He'll need to find three more. He sees ahead, but he doesn't have time to shoot it because Rethinking's on his flank. And he gets the kill. Another round going in favor of Aerial Arise. And No Name just having no luck. Not last round, it was a lot less close than the first three we saw. Ended up in a four on one. Really tough spot. And the second round wasn't really close either. If the pattern continues of one close, one not then this fifth round is sure to be a close one. It looks like they're going to try air, or Aviator games for the fourth time in a row. On some maps, I think this would be okay, going four bomb sites, despite losing it three times. But since it's Vila, I'd kind of like to see them swap it up a little bit. Aviator Games is definitely one of the best sites on the map, if not the best, and it's likely their favorite. But the other sites on this map are still good. They're still relatively favored towards the defense. 
So I'd like to see them changing it up a little bit. <clears throat> you know, they did try once, obviously, round number three, they went trophy. Didn't work out, but again, that one was a close one. You know, that was one that ended up in a one-on-one. -on -one. Couldn't win the one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, that's just how it goes sometimes. Oh, well. Revy changing up once again, this time to the Alibi. And he teased this opera a little bit before. Ended up six-picking to the... Um, Kavira. Now sticking with it, though. And we'll see if he plays a little bit of a roam game. Lewis is on the dock. They're doing a lot of operator switch-ups. But again, they really don't have any hard anchors like they did in the last round. There's no Echo. There's no Maestro. These operators are usually some of the strongest in the game. A little questionable the fact that they're not choosing to play them. Dox G. Yeah, a little bit aggressive as we saw him over by that window. But choosing to play by the hatch instead above the toilets. I think that's a better option for him. Drops down. And already we can see this window being opened up. Jehan wants to be careful with it. There's nobody directly outside of it. Of course, they're just firing in, but... Still, that shows a little bit of intent for them. Speak is coming around on this window. That's a window where they've had a little bit of trouble with defenders before. But they managed to counter it last time. Ooh, and accidentally shoots the alibi. He's going to get tracked, and he is being aggressed on now. Not looking the right way, but he hits the shot regardless. Lewis not ready for this... All out aggression from Speak and Savage Ariel gets another one. Again, this looks like it's just falling apart for the defense. Try getting Doxchi just roaming around. Doxchi here on this first floor still hasn't managed to get back up onto the floor with all the action. Revy, he hears this uh, barbed wire being broken. And Try Gang's taking a lot of damage, but he hasn't gotten in a position to do the damage and he looks away just the wrong time. Speak takes down Try Gang, but Try Gang. Gets the grenade kill in return, so it's a four-on-one for Docs G. He'll need to win it. Gets the first kill on to Rethink and 50% HP left, but he's got possession of the diffuser. I was going to say he just needs to hold it, but he's going for the long flank instead. Currently in the master bedroom. A lot of time on that clock. He hears the enemy team running into goo mines, but nobody is close to him yet. They're trying to roam out. They're trying to figure out where he's at. T1 with this scanner, of course, is going to be able to see him if he's using that cloaking device. A little quiet still. I can turn it up even more. That's not an issue. Diffuser back in favor of Aerial Arise. They've got hold of it now. Docs G saw the outline. Of course, we did. Did he see that? That's such a tight angle. They do know each other are there. He's going to try to fire through that object, but I don't think it's pen penetrable. Runs right past it. The grenade's coming in, and he can't run fast enough. Savage gets the final kill. A long time coming. Aerial Arise will take every single round on attack, and they're only one round away from making it to the semifinals. Round number six will swap sides. A match point, no name, just haven't been showing up. Again, two very close rounds, but they just seem like they don't have the individual skill level to be able to take it. Credit to them, they've been very good sports throughout this uh, this match when we had the really long wait time for the rehost. They were being quite excellent in letting the other team take their time to fix it. Turn up the game sound a little bit more. Continue to update me on if that's good, too loud, too quiet. And here, this is what I'm talking about. There's a lot of playable sites on Vila. Starting with Living Room Library, I think is a good choice from Aerial Arise. Maybe it's not the statistically best bomb site for the defenders, but it doesn't matter a whole lot on Vila. Yes, it matters which bomb site um, is better than the others, but it's a lot more based on personal preference, I feel. And something tells me if they start losing this bomb site, they're not going to play it four times in a row. But here we are, starting things no name, are going to need a clean sweep in the second half. Take it 5-5 and then fight it in overtime. It is not an easy task. Especially not on Velo, where generally the defenders are favored. 
And considering they're going to get to choose what bomb site they play all five rounds, I mean, it's not looking good for the win. Comebacks have happened before, don't get me wrong. I've casted quite a few comebacks in these go fours. But it's a mountain they have to climb. The defense setting up. They managed to take a mute. And he's, he really wants another reinforcement for him. Not sure any of his teammates can help him with that. Lewis is already looking into the building. Jahan is here as well. Just taking the first 30 seconds of the round to scope out. Get these cameras outside. Watch for any runouts. Play it safe because you have to. One mistake could cost you the tournament. When you're a scoreline like this, pre-fire your angles. Be very careful. Hide in this little woodshed that Lewis is in. This is actually a great little position that he's got himself. If anybody's in that hallway, they're dead. But right now, I don't think anybody in the defense are going to play that aggressively. There is an argument to be made that if you're dominating so much like this team is, you can play a little bit aggro, you can play a little bit dumb. But I like that they're not. Play it safe, get the win. Savage gets the first kill. Revy gets his head blown off, and he may not be playing in the rest of this tournament. He'll need the help of his teammates if he wants to play again. Doxy, careful with these angles. Starting to come in now. We see a few outlines on his screen. You can see Trigang's up on the second floor. Janhan as well up here. Trying to open up the floorboards. Do buck things. That's what he likes to do. There is a player right beneath him. And he's not looking down the holes that he's making. He's going to get downed. Will he be finished off? Yes, he will. Savage Area with that shotgun gets his second kill of the round. Docs G finally finds one in return on a T1. Twitch takes down the mute. Speak, though, again gets a kill. Lewis entering from the basement, interestingly enough, but not looking the right direction again. Speak just in a position that Trigang is not expecting. However, he'll get traded. Lewis, again, in the unexpected from the basement. As I was about to say, this is not a position you see a lot of people playing in. Because generally, there's not a lot to do down in the basement other than hide and go for flanks. Lewis with 55 seconds, no diffuser, in a one-on-three for the tournament. Well, to stay in the tournament, rather. <laughs> They've got a long way to go if they want to take this tournament. Sees the head, but can't flick to it in time. Rethinking makes it a clean 6-0 in favor of Ariel Arise. What a fast match. Let me take a look at these stats. This is really a savage show. 10 kills and 2 deaths, but when you get 6-0, I mean, stats don't really say a whole lot. Your best player could just be one of your more passive players. And the fact that T1 got 2 kills, I mean, that's not even reminiscent of what he did, because obviously he disconnected, but... A great showing. We will be casting the semifinals next, likely the match that Ariel Arise will be playing in, but that is going to be on a bit of a delay, so stick around, that's going to be coming soon. We'll throw it to some music. Until then.
walking on ice, paper thin. Skating on the surface of what might have been. Do you want to be set free? Voices in the sound of the cracks are singing to me. Do you want to be set free?
the surface of your skin spreading like a wave waiting for the moment to begin nothing more to say even though i try and try again do you feel the same 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 because i've been thinking on it i've been thinking on it now don't know how to numb it don't know how to tell myself just stop
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good evening and welcome back to the Rainbow Six Go For North American PC, number 140. My name is Corn Pop. I will be casting still in the semifinals here. And we are going to be watching the other side of the bracket now. This is RKT versus Boosted Monkeys, and I'm going to refer to this team as Wrecked. Which is what I assume their name is supposed to stand for. If I'm wrong, then correct me. And Boosted Monkeys, of course, are just Boosted Monkeys. We've hopped over to the other side of the bracket. We have allowed the other caster tonight, Tamies, to take the other semifinal match. Um, and so we're going to take this one. And likely Tamies will take the grand finals. Our map is Oregon, and uh, should be a good one. I have not casted either of these teams before. I've casted a couple of the players on Boosted Monkeys, um, but never the full team, and I don't recognize any of the names on uh, Wrecked either. So this is a couple of uh, brand new stuff that we're going to be watching. Of course, Boosted Monkeys are a real team, play together in leagues and stuff. I believe they were the first seed coming into this go for as well, so predicted to win it all based off the ESL ELO system. But of course, it's all up in the air. Nevertheless, likely to pull out some real strats, likely to do well in this match and in the finals as well if they make it there. But if Wrecked can pull out an upset, that'd certainly be exciting. They do have tags. Or at least two of them are tagged up with the RKT tag. So maybe that means that they they are a real team. It's possible they are. Wrecked is not a super official sounding name, but if they made it this far in the tournament, they've got to be either a real team with strats or just a very good in terms of the individual play. Regardless of which it is, it's bound to be a good match. Our quarterfinals match was not that good. It was a 6-0. Um, and the other quarterfinals match, the team that went up to play um, Ariel, <clears throat> excuse me, Ariel, also won 6-0 in the quarterfinals. So I'm sure their match is going well over on Tammy's Twitch channel. We're starting a little bit late here, but go fours always go late. It is almost 12 o'clock on the East Coast. As we get into these later rounds of the go four, I do like to talk a little bit about fatigue because that does set in. Go fours are pretty intense. If you make it to the grand finals, you're probably playing six or seven games um, where the last one is a BO3. Both teams have readied up though. So we're going to start off the game. Oregon is the map. Semifinals is where we're at in the tournament. I 
And Wrecked and Boosted Monkeys are the teams. Boosted Monkeys will be on defense first, and they'll get to ban first as uh, they are on the orange team. This is, of course, a 10-round game. First team to reach six wins with a BO3 overtime, as it always is in Go For's Best of One until the Grand Finals, which will be a Best of Three in Lion. Excuse me, is our first ban, which surprises nobody at all. I do apologize for the extra long wait time, of course, between uh, the last game and this game. That's just how it goes sometimes, though. Personally, I have no troubles with it, but... Appreciate those who have stuck around. And Clash also getting banned by Wrecked. RKT could also stand for Rocket, I suppose. I think we'll just call him RKT. Nothing wrong with that. Boosted Monkeys, their final ban. It's going to be an Echo. So a lot more standard bans coming out from Boosted Monkeys. Which, if my theory holds of them being more of a, you know, regular team, um, that makes a little bit more sense. Yang Clash. Less... I mean, they're good operators, don't get me wrong. But they're not those power, the powerhouse operators that we often see getting banned. You know, you could have banned a Glass, you didn't. You could have banned Maestro or Mira, you didn't. And instead of going for these operators, who are maybe not as good as those I just listed, but they are definitely more annoying to play against. If you're interested in, if you're interested in Goni's Twitter, or Discover's Twitter, feel free to hit him up. My Twitter is at CornPop16, no underscore, no nothing. Same as my uh, Twitch. <laughs> it's also down below. There's all your your Twitters. If you like the way these players are playing, hey, go ahead and follow them. Say you found them on the stream. If there are any audio issues, do let me know. I can uh, change things around here. I'm going to go ahead and actually preemptively... I'll lower this game audio a little bit. Just because I feel like it's a bit loud. I apologize to the players if I've missed their Twitter handles. That's just how it goes sometimes, though. We're starting here on the basement defense if we're going to stop talking about Twitter and start talking about the game. Um, and the operators you see are very powerful on the defense because, of course, Meister didn't get banned, Mirror didn't get banned. These are two really good operators for the site. It doesn't surprise me at all that they're starting here on the basement. See Discover's doing some reshaping here. Uh, the basement, they're likely going to be doing pretty well. This is an aggressive peek from Affected. Going straight out the main door. Uh, didn't open it up completely. Now he's going to be playing over in Garage. and might be going for a runner. He did just look on cams. But there's somebody out here. You can see Goni as well on the dock. The other roamer of this match. I imagine the smoke is down below. Yes, he is. So we'll see Affected. 30 seconds into this round, and he's still peeking towards the spawn. There's people just sitting in construction, but they're all on drones. I mean, technically, Affected could go for the runout, but eventually those people would get off their drones and go for the peak as soon as they see the notification. What are those drones doing? They're finding Goni currently sitting in the meeting hall, but it looks like they're going for a straight construction take. They're fine just to push into the bomb site. You know, why not? Goni is going to get killed. The first one onto Agira, but then gets killed himself. Affected in the meantime... Also managed to find a frag. So at least only three attackers left alive as they're trying to get towards this basement site. Exploits is already down here and he's got his sights trained on. I believe that's the Maestro. Yes, it is. Coming around, Real Roy's has also found a couple of players. Is he going to be able to get anything though? Throwing out some EMP grenades. Nothing just yet. And Skimes will get the first kill or the next kill for his team. Method falls and evens out the numbers. Shots firing around. Skimes. Coming around. Nice headshot on Discover. Puts the numbers back in favor of his team. They're pushing forward. It's going to be a one for one. Or sorry, just a one trade. Yeah, gets one effect. He gets another onto Skimes. Stealing the team from his maestro. And exploits will be going for the plant. This is a dangerous plant. You've got a minute to go. Don't bother with that. And just walks straight out into the shotgun pistol of... Yeah, Hermad. 
I should go over these rosters um, so we know the players we're playing with. Skimes, Exploids, Agera, Real Roys. I'm assuming the Roys is a tag. We're just going to call them Reels. Real and then Toski is the team of RKT. And then over on Boosted Monkeys, you've got Yahermad, Affected, Discover, Goni, and Methods. Yahermad, already. Sometimes you get games with pronounceable names. Sometimes you don't. Skimzy, I guess, is more how you'd pronounce that first one. Well, Skimzy's doing quite well for his team. The only person to get kills, and he's got three of them. Those are the first three. No, I'm not going to say they were all entry frags, but first couple of them were, and then one down in the basement as well. Skimzy moving over to the Ash this time. Interesting pick. Buck, maybe not the most useful operator on this map. I mean, on some maps, he really shines. Map like Clubhouse. He's very, very strong in. But Oregon, maybe not the best for him as an operator. The defense, after winning in the basement, will come up here to the second floor in the kids' dorms. A strong showing, but when you've got these operator bands and when you're playing in the basement, you expect the defense to do well. Um, it wasn't a traditional take, and I kind of like the fact that RKT came in through construction. They knew that they were going to leave Mira unbanned. They knew they were going to leave Maestro unbanned. Um, so don't go down the way where those operators are really going to be setting up. They're really going to shine. Try to take it at a different angle. You know, Maybe they're not going to be expecting it. Um, the utility likely not going to be directed in that, uh, that way. Obviously, it didn't work out, but... Either way, Goni is now the one in the aggressive situation on the big window. But it's Ajira. The first kill onto Affected. He was likely also doing a sort of a peek out. As he was doing in the beginning of last round. Methods from the Pulse playing down in the basement. Oftentimes teams don't check down there. So if he comes back late in the round, this is a run out from Goni. A very aggressive one too. He's not looking the right direction. He gets detected. Lucky to escape with his life. I don't know that I agree with that one. Getting the pings, the camera finally taken down. Discover, gotta be very careful of these windows around him being broken. Climbing onto the roof. That is Skimzy. Firing in now, the Twitch drone as well. A good pick to try to take down the mirror windows that have usually been picked up. Not here on the top floor, not super needed on this bomb site. The defense finding a lot of pressure. Already a man down and over at the window. Goni takes so much damage. Is he going to be able to live out with the pistol now firing outside? So little HP on him. And he's going to make it back alive. He's a doc too. So he'll be happy to heal himself back up. Meanwhile, Skimzy, the man who dealt out the damage, will be taken down by Yahermad. And after a bolt of action, the defense have regained control of the numbers advantage. Exploits in Master Bedroom opening up that walk-in closet. Real Royce, no doubt, to help in that, even though there was no bandit or mute. And the attack will shift their perspective down towards the first floor. Exploits still firing into the attic up here. There's nobody over there, of course. But Real Royce with the C4 methods! That's why you play Pulse in the basement. You don't get checked very often. And you can come for crazy plays like that. Really well executed by him. Nobody saw that coming. And now the smoke's coming out. Less than a minute into the round, but a really nice shot from Ajira. Takes down Goni. The dock, after going so low early on in this round, takes the headshot and won't be able to heal back up from that one. Ajira looks like he's going to rotate, grab the diffuser that's been sitting on the ledge, and go down to the first floor. Now we know there is somebody down there. It is still the pulse. Method's sitting in meeting hall right now. A really nice angle pointed up, but I think the attacker's smart just to sort of ignore that for now. Although they probably should have gone earlier when it was a two-on-two. Two. Now the time is ticking down. This is a great opportunity for the Pulse to come back in. And he knows that. He's starting his aggression. Discover takes down Ajira, and there goes Yaramad taking down Exploits. Boosted Monkeys will win another round. We got quite a few RKT fans in the chat. 
the team right now not doing super well down by two rounds we're on oregon though and that means the defense are gonna have to go to either kitchen or tower and it looks like they're favoring kitchen as most teams are these days not all but i'd say over 50 percent Taking a while to choose their operators. A couple of last second picks from the boosted monkeys. And they're going to need a little bit more time with the six pick. Swap over to the Mira. Kind of like that six pick. Um, if you six pick over to the Mira, maybe they're thinking, oh, this is probably more likely to be a tower push or a tower defense, rather, um, if they don't have a Mira. But when you six pick onto the Mira, of course, now you've got the operator you need to defend in kitchen. So again, you've got sort of the trifecta of anchors Mira, Maestro, and Smoke. All on band, all willing to do a lot of damage here. Instead of effect affected on the Ella. Not really, we don't see too often these days. Likely going to be playing here in the lockers. Um, no ADS, which is a little bit strange. Usually you'll see a Jaeger playing in here with a lot of ADS to keep him in there. Usually like one or two even a lot of the times. So we'll see how he plays it on the Ella in comparison to a more traditional role. Methods over on the Valkyrie as well. Going to be the other player... Be going to be a little bit more off-site. Ignoring the drone. Another bit of a questionable decision, but he really wants to get these cameras outside. He thinks this is more important, which probably a fair point. This wall's been entirely opened up by Goni. He wants to make it very clear that they can fire into this wall if they need it. Don't give the defenders a chance to hide behind it. And here's a great run out. Going to be able to find two, but laying on the ground, he will get traded. It's a four on three already. As he found one in exploits, I found another. The teams have been so aggressive. Exploits now on the thermite jumps in. You gotta be careful. They do have the sledge. These maestro cams not gonna be too useful for much longer. And again, they're trying to take down the Ella. Now, usually she would have an ADS in here. Eats a little bit of damage from that first grenade course no ads to protect her so affected down to less than 50 percent hp is going to get droned out using the fo12 as well the shotgun the all-powerful scorpion not being used here i think the shotgun seem even more 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 and more play these days methods does get downed over in dining hall though I'm not sure if they know because he still hasn't been finished off. He might be able to crawl his way back towards the Mira. Shots coming out. They're being pinged though and Methods will be able to finally make it over to Discover who will pick up his teammate. Took a while but he got there. Oh with the pistol now. That long range when you don't have the Scorpion. You gotta use that pistol when you've got it. Denying the plans. Great job but missing his shots. Toski will actually take down Exploits after killing Affected. A team kill will stop that Effuser from going down. I believe the Ella was the one to get the down. And numbers are evened out as Method takes the headshot. Gets headshot himself. Real. Leaves it all up to the Mira. Discover. Just under a minute to go in this round. Not watching the doorway. Skimzy will get the final kill of that round. And it'll be one going in favor of Rek this time. Fans will be happy about that one. But that was round number three, and you're on the attack. So that was on the least favored site. They never have to go back to kitchen if they don't want to in the defense. So they're going to head over to the basement, which is not surprising. When you've got Mira, you've got Maestro available to you. Go to the basement as much as you possibly can. In general, it will do you well. We see Yaher Mad setting up this evil eye. Pretty standard. I'm interested to see. I'm going to watch Gomi a little bit more this round. Because last time he was actually the one to get the first kill or to start things off. He's just playing in meeting hall. I'll make sure we've got eyes on affected as well because he's also likely to be playing aggressive as he seems to like to do so. A 
But if I acted over in tower right now, it'd be interesting to see if he wants to play over there this time. Lots of time, though. I mean, he could be wherever he wants to be. Just setting up reinforcements. Not really indicative of where he'll be playing once the round actually starts. Still doing his setup, as Jaeger is often stuck doing. And here's the aggression I was talking about. Goni with the ACOG looking outside such a tight angle. In this dorm's big window. Affected. Not playing in the garage this time. Ooh, this is a nice angle. Looking towards construction. Nobody's... Oh, there is one. You can see him way to the right of your screen. He's going to have to wait there for a while, though. And Goni decides that eh, maybe he'd rather not. So a bit of a roll swap as it's now Goni in the garage. And needs to be careful with this because there are players out and about. But most of them are down in the construction tunnels. So not going to be affected by any sort of peek out. Now both players have rotated around to the meeting hall, but it doesn't really matter because Yahrmad on the Maestro is doing work down towards the site again with his aggressive take. They're just coming in through construction. They're taking the back half of this bomb site. They're not even really worried about that upper floor because they can't do a whole lot to them. Interesting uh, Claymore use there. Staring each other down are the two Claymores. Shotgun, and actually, great job by the Buck. I don't think he knew he was over there, but Skimzy, Skimes, will take down Goni, and Toski finds another one, which instantly puts numbers back in favor of RKT. Aggressing onto the attic now. Can he jump through this hole? I don't believe that he can. Affected. Up top, looks like Methods did die to Toski. So that leaves only two defenders. It's going to be discovered down in the basement, and up top, nobody. Skimzy gets the headshot onto Affected. Discovered the last man with the C4. Gets 100 exploits, but he'll need three more. He's looking towards the main stairs where generally pushes come from, but there's nobody there. Finds the Habana, finds the bullet. Real will take the last kill. I'd like to say hello to all the new viewers. I don't mind if you chat in a different language. Just be polite. We are here in the semifinals of the North America PC Go For number 140. RKT tied now with Boosted Monkeys as they manage to take that basement site. Sticking with the basement now, and I think that's a good decision. As I mentioned, you've got some great defensive operators on the board. Affected with the 6-pick this time, though. Going to the smoke. That's because Methods is no longer playing that operator. But of course, you're always going to want to have a smoke when you're playing this site. It would be very silly not to have a smoke. Makes total sense for them. So they're going to try to defend again. They've successfully done it once and successfully failed once. Successfully failed. What am I saying? They failed once. <laughs> now, we've seen every attack so far come through these tunnels. And I wonder if they're going to start putting more of their gadgets, more of their utilities over towards this way. They do have a mirror window facing this direction. I think they did last time too. I doubt they're going to just give up the really powerful utilities. But you can see there's no more evil eye over the default plant spot. Maestro has chosen to put his utility elsewhere. Um, Alright. <laughs> Decided to go for the major run out while still having an evil eye in the pocket. I guess it doesn't matter. Gomi's fragging out anyways from the top half. And he'll pay, he'll pay for that peak as Real finally takes him down. Ends up being a one-for-one -one trade. But the dock for the buck, that's not bad. I think you take that as a defender. Oh wow, and Method's actually in the same angle. Managed to get the down on Toski. Unfortunately, he's going to get picked right back up, but a lot of aggressive plays coming out from Boosted Monkeys. Seems like they're done with it. The mirror window barely staying intact to discover. Kills that drone right as it's staring down the canister. Be willing to bet that it was on the recharge. Method's with a C4. Now, if he knows where the players are, 
he can just fire this one right out. He's waiting for this. I don't think he's going to get anybody with that one. No, he's not. Unfortunate if he'd gone through the walls. If he had hit his shots, Toski will. Gets the headshot on a methods. Again, Yahermad looking at these main stairs, a place where people generally push, but nobody's over there. All right, they need to be playing over towards this back half of the site, affected in the place where he needs to be. All right, with the gas grenades. Sees them through the mirror window, and actually got a really good setup here with the deployable shield. He can hit some shots, thread the needle, discover with a really nice angle as well. And finally, Yahermad has started facing the correct direction. Trying to take these fights, but Affected really doesn't need to get too aggressive. You're on the defense, you're playing a smoke, you still got two of those gas canisters to deal with. You don't want to risk your life unnecessarily. I think Mir is in a great position to stop any mindless aggression. He's going to go for another gas, uh, gas canister. A minute left in the round, and here's the aggression. Works out for him. Gets the down, sees that he gets the down too, but doesn't manage to finish it off. That could be dangerous. However, Affected with the smoke will end up taking out exploits. So the downed player taken care of. We'll look at the aggressors now. Mostly sitting in meeting hall. Toski's still down here, still with his 50% HP. But real and Agira just staring at this hatch, going for the flash. Now here comes Twitch dropping down, not super aware of where everybody is, and that's evident by the fact that he just died. Toski gets a kill as well, but Yahermad finds his second on the dropping player and gets the third one as well. Toski goes down and boosted monkeys take round number five. Another basement holds. Unsurprisingly, RKT pulling this out first. Not running the Maestro, though. At least not before the 6th pick. I'd like to see the Dock or the Legion or Vigil swap off to him, but... You never know. Now, Discover's going to be pulling out this glass. And that's not an operator that was ever brought to the table by RKT. He's a very good operator. I'm not sure he's that good on basement. That's probably one of his worst sites. Just because you're not going to be aiming from outside. You're mostly dealing with hatches. And if you can get into these corridors, get some smokes. It's not a bad choice. But if they're playing him now, i got to imagine they're going to play him on other bomb sites, attacking those as well. But obviously a powerhouse left unbanned, not utilized by RKT. Now they're going to have to play up against it. With RKT on the defense now, you might see more players here aggressive. Real playing up in the tower right now. I think he's just making holes. I'd expect to see him go back downstairs. But Skimes has the impacts. I mean, he doesn't really need the smoke up here making holes for him. Well, regardless... He's back safe and sound. Agira going to be anchoring still in the site. So a very different style of dock play than what we just saw from Boosted Monkeys. I mean, compare constantly going for peekouts with sitting down at the bomb site at the beginning of the round. Very different indeed. You can see Skimzy is uh, playing up in the top tower. While Tolski sits in the meeting hall. Now there are people running around outside there. Okay, they've already made it up onto the second floor and over to the first floor as well. Since that meeting hall is boarded up, they can be a little bit safe. I'm sure they expect someone to be down there. It's not uncommon. And with the drone, they'll see the feet of the lesion as well. Might just go for the blind pre-fire a little bit too far to the right, but he'll be able to move over and affect it with the first kill of the round. Takes down one of the two roamers over on RKT. Discover takes down one of the anchors. There goes the dock. And again, this is a much more standard push down in the basement. What we're used to seeing it looks like it's going a little bit better. Discover here on the glass where he really shines. Throwing out some smokes and going to be able to try to cover for the plant. Meanwhile, Effect is getting melee kills. Discover's getting headshots. 
This is not going well. Skimzy's not on the plants. He'll drop down right into the crosshair of Affected, and Boosted Monkeys easily take that attacking round onto the basement. 4-2 to two now is your scoreline. Boosted Monkeys are looking very good to go over to the Grand Finals. Of course, it's just a best of one. First to six will move on. The loser gets eliminated. Round number seven. And sticking to the basement. Again, definitely the strongest bomb site with the current bands, but they lost that last one so convincingly. I wouldn't be upset if they tried to swap things up. Especially because it's getting to that point where if you lose this one, you're on match point. You're one round away from being kicked out of the tournament if you lose this one, if you're RKT. But who knows? Maybe they understand exactly what they did wrong in the last basement defense. Still not bringing the Maestro. They're bringing the Bandit this time. An interesting decision. Bandit is certainly a great operator if you're playing up on the second floor. But not a common pick for the basement site. They've brought the Mute as well, which just makes it double per backslam. Of course, the Mute makes sense. right? If you're going to play a sort of drone stopping or hard destruction counter... You're going to play Mute when you're in the basement because you can stop this hatch from being opened up, of course. But having the Bandit as well, it'll be interesting to see how they utilize his batteries. He hasn't placed any of them down yet. Maybe wary of a Twitch drone. Looks like it's just going to be purpose to make the hold and meeting hall a little bit stronger. Of course, last time he got pretty punished playing in this meeting hall. I guess it's alright. The attic not reinforced on either side, and actually a hole been made for them. Mute really aggressive. I've seen some nice mute plays from that position. Sometimes with a shotgun as well, which can be really interesting. But it'll be Skimes playing up at the tower. And again, Toski in the meeting hall. Take a look at the attackers. They want to be uh, sure they're droning thoroughly. They know last round somebody was playing up on that top floor. They want to be wary of that again. It's currently playing in tower, and likely Goni noticed that there was a hole. Oh no, there's not a hole actually to get to the basement. To get into the attic, rather, from the uh, dorms. Discover with the first headshot onto Ajira, and that's the mute. That's the downside of playing so close to the stairs. When you're up against the glass, when you don't ban glass, these are the pitfalls you fall into. The mute jammer now down. Under the cover of Smoke. Meth is going to take down Skimzy. So that's another player who is on that roam taken over. Toski still playing in the meeting hall. And he's weary of people above him, next to him, and below him. He's in a bit of a tough spot here. Of course, of course he could drop down a site. Looks like he's going for more of an aggressive play, though. The Habana opening things up around him. He needs to be so careful meleeing these drones. Sees the Habana. Very delayed reaction time. From Goni. Gonna be Toski living another day. Still looking towards this garage. And they really don't feel comfortable getting in and planting. I mean, they're focusing a little bit on this basement. Three of their operators. Toski at least keeping one of them distracted. While the other members go for the plant. Work this bottom floor. And it'll be Goni with the headshot. Taking down the last remaining roamer. And now all four attackers will put their attention towards this basement. Smoke's coming out. Gas canister as well from Real. Totally blind, but his only purpose here is to stop this plant from going down. It did not work. Goni's going to get this one. Discover's playing up top from the hatch using this cover of Smoke. The C4 downs Goni. Exploits the last player left alive and boosted Monkeys another dominating round. Successful attack on basement once again. And they're one round away from the Grand Finals. RKT, they're finding themselves in a position where they don't have any roamers because the roamers are all dying. That's one issue. And then when it comes to the anchors defending down, first of all, you're down players because your roamers haven't done their job very well. They've all died. And then second of all, you don't have the maestro. So it's really hard to def uh, deny that plant. You've got the smoke, yes, that's one, but why not take the maestro as well? He's got the ACOG, you're playing Doc down there. 
Maestro's got the ACOG as well. It really doesn't make any sense to me. They're going to go up to the kids' dorms instead. Which, okay. If you're not comfortable on the basement, if you're showing you're not, switch it up. Why not? I think it's a smart choice. It's unfortunate because they're going to have to successfully defend the basement at some point. I guess not technically. <laughs> if they really want to try their hand at tower and kitchen, then they could go for it, but... More than likely, they're going to have to try the basement again at some point. But first, they'll be tasked with the second floor. And see, now they're not bringing the bandit. Nothing makes sense for this team. We'll go take a look at... Skimzy up in tower at the moment, and he could be going for something aggressive. He's going to be playing over on T3. Again, exploits with the dock, just anchoring, playing it really passive on that operator. Stark contracts to what we saw from Boosted Monkeys. Ajira playing an armory. This is another thing that you don't see super often. But working with his drones... It's going to be okay. Over by the window, the Blackbeard doing work. Yaramad loses his shield, but he'll take that trade every day of the week. No smoke for the defense. No mute for the defense. Toski loses his life, loses the battle on the stairs, and then the buck from below. Very well done by Methods. Still doing so much work down here. It's Ajira who gets the next kill for his team. And the defense biting back strong. This is looking like a decent round over. They're still down in numbers. Trying to fight on this window. It's a difficult position to take. Skimzy just now rotating back towards the site. Did nothing at all over in tower. And Ajira gets another Ajira with two in a row. Headshots from the window. And all of a sudden, two defend two attackers remain. Goomine's going into foot. Skimzy's being tracked by this jackal, though. Gonna make his life a lot harder if he's trying to take these fights. Exploits. Watching this angle as well. Jir's still playing by this window, as he should be. He's done a lot of work there so far. Exploits the long-range dock. Oh, no, did he hit that little metal bar? Oh, that hurts. Yeah, hate to see it. Lance the second one, though. Skimzy will be back up to almost full health. Still being tracked by the Jackal, though. It's a difficult position to be in. Now, this is rotated back up to the top floor. He's done playing games with the Buck, and he's done playing this game in general. He loses his life to a Jira. It's all unaffected in a one-on-three. His teammate's been dropping like flies. There's one minute left for him to do some magic with the Jackal. Again, being disrupted by those Mute Jammers. Throws out a smoke, sees the head, but can't find the shots. Lives through it regardless, and a risky run pass. A second risky pass over... By the lesion, he's going to throw out one of his goo mines and a smoke will go down in kind. Ready to peek this again, but manages to narrow through some blind fire coming through that doorway. They don't know where he's at. And he gets the kill onto Skimzy. A two on one now, 28 seconds on that clock. Playing in the small dorms, trying to get over towards this A-bomb site. Firing through the wall, nobody there. These defenders wanting to play it safe. They've already lost one. They can't really afford to lose two more. Sees the head and a great shot onto Ajira. One on one, 10 seconds to go, affected on very little HP. He's done a lot so far, but it'll be difficult to get this last one. Will he find the kill? No, he won't. Exploits gets the final shot, and RKT will stay in this tournament. What a round. My heart's pounding after that one. Round number nine. And all it took for a defensive win for RKT was to play on kids' dorms. Where do they go now? It's looking like the basement. Operators locked in now before the six pick. And as I mentioned before that last round, you have to win on basement. You can't gamble it on the tower and kitchen. I mean, you're going to have to do one of them, but you don't want to have to do both. The basement's such a strong site, usually from the defense, especially with these uh, bands that have come out for the operators. 
but they've lost it two times now. And again, still no Maestro from them. No Bandit this time, which I'm liking. The Jaeger is a fine pick. The Mute I like as well. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure you need the Legion in this situation. I'd really like to see a Maestro come up from them. At least try it, you know. You haven't played it at all in Basement. Such a powerful operator. But, they're content, they're going to play without it, and they're going to need to find a win as well. Toski, likely going to be playing in the meeting hall, this is where we've seen him before, and uh, Real Roy's, he's currently down in the basement. If we see him anchor, that'll at least be a switch up in the strategy, no longer playing at tower. It seems like regardless of their site, they've had people playing up and around tower. And it's it's alright, I've seen it work certainly for the basement bomb site. But I think I like, if you're going to switch something up, sure. Bring him down to the basement, have another anchor. Works for me. Could just be that he's Jaeger and he took too long to set up all his things. And now he's stuck down there, but... The attacker is wasting no time entering the building. Using these breaching charges on Twitch to start an angle? Maybe. I mean, his team's already gotten control of this. And there's the shotgun from Skimzy. Take his down, Goni RKT. Take the early player lead. Discover. He's got that jackal tracking information. Sees the smoke canister. And while you'd like to have the kill, the canister going down is not too bad either. Toski playing really far back in this meeting hall. That'll save him from the grenade that gets tossed in there by methods from up top. The drones are coming in, but the mute jammer is not enough. And Affected has the information he was looking for. Playing in pantry. Toski getting droned now repeatedly by multiple team members. And Discover will find the frag, evening out the numbers four on four here. And you can hear Buck doing some more work, opening up that angle that the Twitch was looking at with the breaching charge. They're worried about more people in Attic, and this is pretty good, actually. The fact that Reels has decided to play downstairs this time, they're expecting a player to be up in the Attic. There has always been a player in Attic. Surely, look at this. So many players, all of them except for Discover right now, worried about a player in Attic. And there's nobody there. Wasting time. Even though Reels is down in the basement. Yahrmad sees the player down in the basement. Caesar's a Jagger. Will they be able to put two and two together that there's nobody roaming up top? Maybe, but they still want to be content. They still want to be thorough. Most of the team rotating back towards construction. And they will change up the game plan of this push. And a great choice by them. Discover takes down Reels. Three defenders remain. Exploits, of course, has the call from his teammates that they are now coming from the back direction. Smoke's being thrown out. Again, no glass this time. So they can play a little bit more safely around these smokes, but getting taken down. It's the last player alive. Boosted monkeys make quick work. Finish out the game. There was some fight in the end by RKT. But in the end, not enough. Boosted Monkeys are your winners. They're going to be going on to the Grand Finals. 6-3 is your scoreline. I'd like to thank everybody in chat for coming out and watching this game. That's pretty nice. Your numbers are sitting out right now. Do appreciate you all checking this out. My name's been Corn Pop. I'm actually going to be done for the night. I hope that Tamies is still casting. Um, it's possible that he is not. But either way... I unfortunately need to get to bed, so I will be done for the night. I will send you over towards more Rainbow Six community casters if they're currently live. Um, but otherwise, thank you all for watching. Give the channel a follow if you like my casting. You want to see more, go for it. I would appreciate that. My Twitter and other socials are linked down below. So if you do those types of things, then go follow me on that as well. My name is Pop, and I hope you have an excellent night.